we're talking about solving math problems and the eight most useful strategies to use when solving those math problems. And today, we're going to look at finding a pattern. Now, patterns are extremely useful. You know, patterns are one of the first things we learn in kindergarten. And we don't learn them first because they're easy. We learn them first because they're important. Just ask any computer programmer or rocket scientist that you know if they use patterns, because believe it or not, they do. So when we use this strategy, what we do is we look at what we already know, the data that they already give us. We look at the information that the story problem tells us and see if we can recognize a pattern in that data that we can then extend into the unknown and solve our problem. Here, let's take an example of how we might use finding a pattern to solve a problem. So let's solve some problems using patterns. The first thing we're going to look at is a repeating pattern, and we're going to use pictures to solve the repeating pattern. Okay, let's look at a simple repeating pattern using pictures. So the information I'm giving is a train, bus, a train, a bus, train, and they want us to figure out what are the next two objects in our pattern. So what we need to look for is repeating. Train, bus, train, bus, train. So do you notice anything repeating? And we do. We see that we have a train and a bus, a train and a bus, a train, what would come next in our pattern? A bus. Very good. So we have train, bus, train, bus, and then train, bus again. Another way to look at these patterns is by assigning letters and identifying patterns by letters. So for example, I see a train. I haven't seen a train before. It's the first in our pattern, so we're going to give it an A. Then comes a bus. Haven't seen a bus before. We've used A, so we're going to give it a B. Next is a train, but we've seen train before, and a train has gotten an A, so we're going to give this train an A as well. Buses get Bs. And what we have here is an A, B, A, B pattern. This train gets an A. And then we guessed bus, or we predicted bus, and we were right. Bus gets the B. Now, if we were to complete the pattern using letters A, B, A, B, A, B, A, but what does an A represent? An A represents a train. So train would come next in our pattern. So in this problem, we use the four pictures of the buses and the trains to be able to predict what came next in that pattern. And this concept can be used no matter how complicated the pattern. Let's take a look. Let's look at this problem a little bit more involved. So we have a car, bus, train, car, bus, train, car, bus, train, car. So do you see anything repeating? Yes, exactly. We see car, bus, train, car, bus, train, car. What do you think comes next in our pattern? That's right, bus. Car, bus, train, car, bus, train, car, bus. What do you think the last object of our pattern is? Train. Very good. Car, bus, train, car, bus, train, car, bus, train. In terms of letters, what would we call this pattern? Well, let's look at it. The car is the first car, so it's an A. Haven't seen a bus before, so that's a B. First time we're seeing a train, so that's a C. Car we've seen already gets an A. The bus we've seen gets a B. The train gets a C. And then we're starting over again. Can you name this pattern in terms of letters? 
It's an A, B, C pattern. Very good. So that's how repeating patterns work. Not too difficult, huh? But before we move on to growing patterns, a word of caution. We're looking for the pattern to repeat, not just an object. Don't be tricked. Here, let's take a look. So I know what you're thinking. Patterns are pretty simple, and they are simple if you know what you're doing. But you can be fooled. So you need to look for the repeating pattern, not simply a repeating object. So let's look at what we have here. So here's the information we're given. Car, bus, car, train, car. So even though the car repeated, this car was followed by a bus, and this car is followed by a train. Even though the car repeated, the pattern did not. Car, bus, car, train, car, bus, car, train. So this is where using letters might help us. So let's label these objects. There's the first car, so we can give it an A. There's the first bus, so we're going to give it a B. Now there's a car. We've seen the car already, so we have to give it an A. But this is train. This is the first time we're seeing a train. So the train gets a C. Car is A, B, car again is A, and C. So what we have here is an A, B, A, C pattern. A, B, A, C, A, B, A, C. So it would be A and B. So what's an A? Let's look at our picture. Every A is a car, so that means this A must be a car too. B. What's a B? Every B is a bus. 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 So that means this must be a bus as well. Okay, repeating patterns. I think you can handle it. Now we're going to move on to growing patterns. Growing patterns are patterns we use with numbers. And now we're going to look for a change in the number and use that change to predict or to figure out what the next numbers in our pattern are. Let's take a look at some growing number patterns. Okay, let's start with a number pattern you should recognize. Two, four, six, you should know the next two answers. But let's figure it out using our strategy. So when trying to complete a number pattern, we want to compare each number relative to the number that came before it. So I included a number line because a number line is a fantastic tool and, and very helpful in problem solving most math problems, or many of them anyway. So we started with 2. So if I go to 2 on my number line, and then we need to go to 4. So from 2 to 4. So if we look, I'm taking one, two hops on the number line. So to get from two to four is plus two. So now we got to go from four to six. Well, let's do the same thing. We're starting at four. We're ending at six. So how many hops on the number line? One, two. One, so that's plus two. So to get to our next answer, we need to take two hops on the number line. So let's do that. We're starting at six and we're going to take two hops. One, two. So what's the next number in our pattern? Eight. Did you get eight? Good job. All right, what's the next number? I'll give you a second. All right, once again, we want to go two. One, two. And what is our number? 10. Good. Can you guess what the next number in our pattern is? Did you guess 12? You'd be right. And like I said, you should recognize this right from the get-go. What are these numbers? 2, 4, 6, 8, 10, 12. They're even numbers, of course. You knew that. Okay, so here we have a number pattern that is not as recognizable. One, four, seven. 
So the first thing this says is it's, we start at 1. And we'll go into 4. So how much did this pattern grow to get from 1 to 4? 1, 2, 3. So it's plus 3. Plus 3. And now we're going to go from 4 to 7. And how much does it grow to get from 4 to 7? 1, 2, 3. So now we can establish that our number pattern grows by 3 every number. So what would our next number be? We start at 7 and grow by 3. 1, 2, 3. Did you get 10? Of course you did. Because 10 is the right answer. All right, I'll give you a second. What's the next number in our pattern? 1, 4, 7, 10. Did you get 13? Because if you did, you got it right. And how did you get that? Well, you started at 10. Our pattern is plus 3. So we go 1, 2, 3, and 13 is our answer. And we can use this concept to go backwards as well. And we're going to use our number line as a tool. So here we have numbers, but they are decreasing from greater to lesser. 9, 7, 5. But we're going to use the same concept. But instead of positive, it's negative or minus or backward. So we're starting at 9 and ending at 7. So what does that mean? That means we go back or subtract 2. And then to get from 7 to 5, we do the same thing. So our pattern is actually growing by negative 2. I know above your pay grade, but still. So in order to find the next number in our pattern, we have to subtract 2. 9 minus 2 is 7. 7 minus 2 is 5. And 5 minus 2 is 3. Good. All right, I'll give you a second. What's next in our pattern? 9, 7, 5... We subtract 2, and it's 1. Okay, now that we have an understanding of patterns, both growing and repeating patterns, let's see how we can use what we just learned to solve math problems. Okay, let's examine this problem and use what we've just learned about patterns to solve the problem. So it says Tom eats eggs or cereal for breakfast. He switches every day. If Tom had eggs on the first day of the week, what will he have on the fifth day of the week for breakfast? Okay, so he has eggs and cereal, and there's a pattern. He switches every day. So it's telling us that on the first day, Tom has eggs. And we want to know what is he going to have on the fifth day. So what's in between? Day two, day three, and day four. So on the first day he had eggs, so that means on the second day he's going to have cereal. On the third day he's going to have eggs again. On the fourth day he's going to have cereal. So what's he going to have on the fifth day? On the fifth day, he's going to have eggs. Very good. And as a bonus, what kind of pattern do we have? Can you tell me the letter pattern? It is an A, B pattern. All right, very good. Nicely done, my fellow mathematician. Okay, let's look at this problem and see if we can use what we've learned about number patterns to solve for the answer.
It says Sammy wanted to see how good she could get at making paper airplanes. She counted how many she could make in an hour. The first day she made two. The next day she made five. On the third day she made eight. If she continues like this, how many will she make on the fourth day? All right, so let's look at what we know. We know the first day she made two airplanes and she got better at it. And so the next day she made five. The third day, the day after that, she made eight. And now they're asking us how many will she make on the fourth day? Okay, let's solve the problem. It's a good time to whip out the old number line. So we start at two. So we start at two. We want to go to five. So when we hop on the number line, three, four, five, plus three. And we start at five and we go to eight. One, two, three, plus three. So to solve for the unknown number, we have to go start at eight and go three. One, two, three. And there we go. Our answer is 11. On her fourth day, she made 11 airplanes. That's pretty impressive. So there you go. I hope you enjoyed our little introduction into using the find a pattern strategy to solve a math problem. But more importantly, I hope you learned something. And I hope you stay with me and join me next time as we travel down the road to becoming the next primary mathematician. We'll see you next time.